This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the audio workflow that allows us to mix Premiere Pro projects in Adobe Audition. Hi, this is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll give you an overview of how Audition works. This is the Audition interface, and I'll start here. On the digital production buzz, I do two types of recording. I'll either record an interview on a phone line, which gives me a single mono clip, or I'll record an interview on Skype, which gives me a, a dual channel mono. This is a Skype interview. My track is up here, and a guest track is down here. As we look at Audition, this is a timeline-based format. So there's the timeline where my audio clips are stored. This works exactly the same conceptually as it does inside Premiere. This is the essential sound panel. We're going to talk about that later. I'm not going to talk about it now. So I'm going to click these three lines right here, which open up a flyout menu. And I'm going to close the panel just to get myself some more room. Like any Adobe interface, if I hit the tilde key, whatever panel my cursor is in enlarges to full screen. And like Premiere, I have a files panel. This is the project panel, which lists the files that I have access to inside my session, the media browser, which works the same as the media browser inside Premiere, and a variety of other controls. The one that I use the most is the effects rack. This is similar to a combination of both the effects panel in Premiere and the effect controls. We'll be working with that later, but not right now. There are other panels that are available and like Premiere they're stored inside the window menu and these are the choices and most of these I leave the defaults alone just as Premiere has workspaces we also have workspaces this is default for audio editing this is mixed to picture we'll see that in just a couple of minutes audition remains very very big in radio production it's where it got its first big break and radio production is more high speed so it opens up a uh, interface with metadata for tagging so that people know where the clips came from you can see additional workspaces by going up to the window menu and taking a look at all the different choices and these are all just wonderful but the ones that i use the most are default and edit audio to video and just as you can change the interface in premiere by dragging stuff around you can change the interface in and audition by dragging stuff around audio meters this big thing down here now if i play this remember you're not going to hear anything we're hearing the combined audio from all the tracks this is the master output if i right mouse click in the master output this allows me to set what the settings are because I really don't care how quiet anything is, because I, <laughs> I live in the world today, I care about how loud it is. So I set this to 24 dB range. If I was doing classical music where dynamic range is critically important, these settings simply change what the meters display. They're not affecting my levels at all. Dynamic peaks means that as I play this, see that little yellow line? That yellow line floats. It represents the loudest my sound has been for the last second or so. And this darker line is called a, a valley line where it represents how soft my audio has been for the last second or so. So between the dark blue and the, the yellow line, I'm able to see what the spread is between the loudest and the softest passages in, in my work. There's a couple of editing tools that I wanted to illustrate here before we got into a mix, which are slightly different than Premiere and extremely useful. We can trim any clip, same as we can inside Premiere. I'm going to grab the title and I can drag the clip around. This is Premiere-ish. If I grab the edge of a clip, I can make a clip shorter or longer. But notice that although these two clips were recorded at the same time, they're not locked, unlike tracks one and two on a dual mono clip inside Premiere, where I can't move the left channel without moving the right channel here, I can. So I've got to be really, really careful when I'm dragging a clip that if I'm working with multiple clips, I select both of them and drag them. Otherwise, they're going to get dragged out of sync. Hold the command key down and scroll wheel in or scroll wheel out. You can quickly zoom in or zoom out on a on a particular section of the of the timeline or type just simply the plus key, same as Premiere, or the minus key and you zoom back out again. Now I'm going to zoom in. There's my timeline. It shows me that I'm uh, 1 minute 25 seconds. So there's each of those little gaps is a second. Well, I need to get closer than that. I need to actually get closer than that. I want to get close. Actually, I'm now down to the sample. That's 1 48,000th of a second between that square dot and this square dot. So if you want to get detailed in your audio editing, we can drill down to the sample level. Premiere only takes us to 1 10,000th of that level. I mean, Audition is just ridiculously precise. Here's a couple tools that I want to show you. 
Number one, when we slice tools, we use the razor blade tool. I can slice an individual track. I can, if, I, if they're not collected, there we go. I can slice an individual track by typing the letter B for blade, and notice the blue line is on a single track, or type the letter B a second time, and now I can select all the tracks and cut them at the same time. Or I can put my playhead where I want the cut to occur and type Command B. Command B will cut all the clips at the position of the playhead. So I can cut a clip by position of the playhead or by using the, the blade tool. I use this quite frequently, but the one that I use the most is the, what's called the time selection tool. It's this one right here. Many, 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 many times, let's just find an example. Oh, there's a good example. Here, for instance, the letter V, the same as Premiere, allows me to go back to the arrow tool, the selection tool. Because of the way that my studio works, I don't wear headsets when I do an interview. I have it on a speaker. And the guest's mic bleeds through from the speakers into my microphone, and I record the guest, as, I, as you see here, on my own track. Well, I don't want that. I want to get rid of it. So I select the time selection tool, and I simply drag, and I now select a region, and I can get rid of it. By the way, notice that what it's really done is it just set an in keyboard shortcut as the letter I or an out keyboard shortcut as the letter O. It sets it at the position of the playhead. And by the way, to get rid of the in and the out is the letter G. G gets rid of the in and the out. But notice with the time selection tool, I've got the guest is speaking. That's the answer. And then I think about my next question for about a lifetime. And I say, okay, now I've got the question. So I'm going to select this region. Notice that I'm dragging across both tracks to right about there. And now I hold the shift key down, the command key down, shift, command, delete. And I not only delete that highlighted region across both tracks, which keeps them in sync, but it closes up the gap. So I select the time selection tool, drag across, hit the delete key. And if I don't hold any modifier keys down, it deletes it and doesn't change the sync. Now here, I've got one of my egregious breaths when I'm taking too deep a breath. I want to get rid of that. And I've got a lip click here because otherwise I wouldn't be able to illustrate this. I could just trim the clip and get rid of that. Remember, I can edit to the 1 48,000th of a second. Getting between a lip click and the start of the first word is easy. And as you'll see, if I need to just sort of fade this up so it doesn't pop, I grab a fade box and drag over, and I've just faded that up. Core concepts. Audition is timeline-based, the same as Premiere. You move clips around the same as Premiere. You just simply grab them and drag them. But you got a couple of editing tools that we're not used to in Premiere. The Blade tool, yes, that's the same in both. I can cut an individual track, or I can cut all tracks using the Blade tool or Command-B, editing at the position of the playhead. But the Time Selection tool, keyboard shortcut, the letter T, the Time Selection tool allows me to quickly select a region by automatically marking an in and an out, I can then just simply delete that region to leave a hole, or press Shift, Command, Delete, delete that region, and close up all downstream clips. This tool, the Time Selection tool, I use all, all, all the time. And for the interviews that I do with the Buzz, because so many people speak with ums and ers, it's not unusual for me to have a five or eight minute interview that's got 100 or 200 edits in it, just cleaning out the ums and the ers, because I don't want to waste the time to have somebody share their content that takes 15 minutes, which if I come cut the ums and the ahs out, I can take a 15 minute interview and put it down to about eight minutes. It just benefits everybody. We're not wasting time listening to somebody not able to speak English. With that as a, as a basic overview of how Audition works, let me show you now how we work with it inside Premiere. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the audio workflow that allows us to mix Premiere Pro projects inside Adobe Audition. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 237. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all easy to view. Plus, premium members can now access sample media and projects. 
Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it several times a month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.